Hi, so we've been doing quite a lot of work on this Daisy turbine just to investigate it a little bit and see if we could get some more efficiency out of it. But of course, there comes a time when you have to scale up. Do it bigger. Now, there's uh, two ways to scale up, actually. One, obviously, is to literally do it bigger. Go out there and find ourselves some massive, massive spoons and mix one couple of metres across. So anybody got a one metre tablespoon, we're away. The other way is to do it smaller. And that might actually seem counterintuitive. But if you remember the wind wall, then we have that option of doing it smaller. Because the wind wall is reported as being super efficient. Lots and lots of little ones, all in a row, capture more of the energy in the air. They're cheaper to build, even aggregated. Per unit, they're cheaper, and putting all those units together is cheaper than just building one big, massive one. Then, of course, you've got the benefits of redundancy. If one breaks, the whole thing doesn't go down. You can get time to repair that one unit and still get the bulk of generation. So there's a lot to recommend a wind wall and to go bigger by going smaller. Now, of course, I have this thing. It's a Mars Pro 2P resin base 3D printer, and I'm printing stuff here in the ABS light resin. Now, to my mind, printing stuff is a little bit of cheating. And one of the things that I like about this is that the teaspoons are actually just readily available to everybody. So you could build versions like this out of teaspoons and row those up with each other, no problem at all. 3D printing it can seem as a bit of a cheat, but I've got a 3D printer and I want that shape, so I'm going to 3D print them. But you could still hand make them and arrange a wind wall with slightly larger units, because this unit is fixed by the size of the teaspoon that we used, although we could chop the handles off, I guess. But I'm going to 3D print them, and as I said, it might be a bit of a cheat, I suppose. But don't forget, we do have a 3D printer competition running, where you can win this 3D printer, and we are going to send it to the person who wins a competition. And if you want details of that, it's in video number 1471. Check out that competition, and you could win yourself a brand new, unboxed, Elegoo LCD 3D printer Mars 2 Pro. <laughs> Resin UV MSLA! <laughs> I don't know how many more initials I can get in there. Elegoo sent us this for free, specifically for that competition in 1471. I'm going to use it to print the blades for my wind wall version of the spoon generator. And I think that it's a good way to go. And I'm doing that because I can do it. But if you are only using teaspoons, and of course you can make them slightly larger and still put them in a wind wall. Remember render. this from video 1321? It's a wind wall made out of these things, PC fans. There's about a hundred of them. The problem with these, obviously, is that PC fans are meant to drive air. They're not really designed to have air flowing over them. But it would be brilliant if we could have air flowing over them. So what we have to do is snap off those blades. We snap off those blades, we get that. Now that bit is a generator. It's a motor actually and it operates as a generator and I've done quite a few videos on how to do that um, conversion. It's a piece of cake. What we've got to do now is glue a smaller version of that onto that and we've both gone smaller and larger at the same time which I love because it's a contradiction. You can bet your bottom dollar that this was an iterative process that took a fair bit of time. I started off with a cone, actually, just to see how that would do by itself. Then I did a scale replica of this, and unfortunately that was poop. So I did this version, where we have larger blades. Then it clicked, I was working with a 3D printer, so I did the shuttlecock version, because of course motion is relative, you hit a shuttlecock it spins, so if you're blowing air over a shuttlecock it should rotate, and that's what I did. But then. I got a ton of help from people and a ton of really good suggestions and people saying stuff that would be actually quite difficult to do with teaspoons because you're limited by the, the nature of the teaspoon. But of course, with a 3D printer, you don't have that limit at all. Now, if you cast your mind back to the rose turbine, one of the key elements, and it does seem 
the absolute key element to this is the cone in the centre. It's, it's basic, really, but the cone is directing the wind and this area that would otherwise be unused is now getting used. And so, of course, we're getting an efficiency before, uh, increase because we don't have a centre. All of this area is getting used, so the cone is key. Once you've got that in your head, then you can develop around the cone and, and lots of people send really great ideas including spiralling down the cone, indentations in the cone, changing the direction of the veins at the bottom of the cone and so on and so on. And having a think about all of those, what we've come up with is this final version. So now I've got to stick that on there, like that, and give it a test. Okay, so I've got everything set up. Here's my uh, meters right there and you'll notice I put two meters on. I'm recording the amps and the volts at the same time. Talk about learning, eh? So I've got it wired up in series parallel. We're going to read the milliamps and the millivolts off of that. Actually, it'll be volts and milliamps. And we're going to give it a bit of a wind source. And the wind source I'm going to use, it's a hairdryer. So let's have a look at that. So round about, I have to check the video, round about 6 volts and 33 milliamps, something like that. <laughs> so there you go, we got 210 milliwatts out of that, of a single unit. That was better than a poke up the bum with a sharp daffodil, wasn't it? So all I've got to do now is 100 more of these. So it'll be a little while. But basically, that's how I'm going to scale up this wind turbine into a wind wall by making those tiny ones and attaching them to there. Because in here, remember, that motor, it's a brushless DC motor. The conversion efficiency of brushless DC is around about 80% or so. So it's a pretty efficient conversion system put on a pretty efficient turbine blade. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the video series so far. Thank you very much for watching. And please remember to like and subscribe.